do, 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 do. Just do a couple tweaks here. Brainstorm, excellent. Hello everyone. Making a few tweaks to my overlay here. It sounds like the sound is good, so I'm gonna do that. Sorry if my voice is a little rough today. I just flew in from PAX. Uh, it's been a crazy, hectic few days. I'm excited. <laughs> Just coughing. I, I'm I'm excited to do the stream thing where we make the games today. <laughs> hmm. All right. Got everything. Just about in order here. Notebook. Got my pens. Already put ink on myself. Pretty typical. All right. So if you're joining us for the first time today, this is the game design stream where we make a game from, we take a game from zero to game concept in about an hour. So there's not a lot of preparation in terms of coming up with ideas for the stream. The idea is to use a practice called mind mapping to come up with some ideas that will ideally, fingers crossed, end up being something that we can direct and mold and shape into uh, a game concept. And once we've come up with the concept and written down some of the ideas, the idea is to, in the future, do prototyping and actually get them into a playable form. It's, it's been working really well so far. So some of the things we've done recently are uh, the fashion party game. We started with, oh, what was it for that? Was that pewter? I don't think that was pewter. I forget, or was that potato? It wasn't potato. I forget what the starter word was, for that one was. But me and the chat came up with this idea of a game where you're trying to be the most fashionable but not too pretentious and you're going to a series of events. We also came with, up with one last week um, similar to a tile sliding labyrinth style game. But instead of being in a dungeon, you're underground, you have a bunch of bugs and aphids and stuff, and you're going around collecting particular types of food. And that one started from potato. So today we're going to start off with a concept, with a word, and start mind mapping, go from there. See here for my setup, I have my trusty notebook where I can draw some of these ideas so you'll be able to see what I'm working on in real time and I have my notes over here as well. We'll start to, once we become a little more solid on what the game's going to be, write out the notes, draw some ideas, and have a living document of the ideas as, as they come into existence. Nice thing about having a digital document to keep it going along. I always use a lot of physical notebooks, take a lot of physical notes, but the digital makes it really easy to come back to uh, have a very well organized area where the game is and it forms the basis of the rules too. So it makes it really easy if you're keeping track of that in one digital place instead of across multiple notebooks as I like to do. Um, it gives it a nice home for future development and idea coming up with this. So some of the words that we've started for our mind mapping recently have been pewter, potato. Uh, what's a good word to start with for our game? Um, maybe I'll do a brainstorm for the the word that we're going to use. If you have anything you'd like to like me to start from, feel free to hop in with that. Um, like light, sunshine, 
clouds. Yes, it's a little cloudy today here in Seattle. Um, star. I like star. Thinking about my fancy uh, water bottle that I have here. Trusty unicorn water bottle. It's got stars on it, so let's start with star. Give me one sec while I do a share of this. We're live. Making all the games. Cool. Okay, right, so for the mind mapping, if you haven't done it before, the idea is to start with a concept in the center of the page. It's very similar to more traditional brainstorming where you make an ordered list of items. What I like about mind mapping in particular is it's more likely to it's a different way of laying out your concepts, so it's easier for some ideas to trigger other ideas. When you're looking at a brainstorm coming up with things, you often focus on the most recent things or the things at the beginning of the list, where it was with mind mapping because there's no hierarchy to the things. It's easy to bounce around um, and keep talking about whatever catches our fancy. Uh, the sun. Talks a little bit about sunshine over here. The sun is a star. Um, is at the center of our solar system. Along with a bunch of other planets. So you can write anything you want in the, the mind map configuration. It's supposed to be a very free form idea generation tool. So it's not about, we're not thinking about games yet at all. And I think that's something important. People ask me sometimes like, how do you keep coming up with ideas for games? Um, what do I do if I get stuck coming up with ideas? And the mind mapping is a really great tool for that because we're not focusing too much on what are the mechanics gonna be? How do I get started? Prototyping. Um, I think it's really exciting to start from not even theme, you know, right here we could say like, oh, we're gonna make a game about solar system, there's gonna be a bunch of planets in there, but more just like little idea trigger points where we can have things grow and generate from ideas, idea begets idea, and all of a sudden, you know, for when we start with planets as our starting concept, and all of a sudden we're thinking about like spinning plates, like rotating around each other and it's a dexterity game. So I can come up with some cool things. I'm gonna write that down because why not? Spinning plates and dexterity. Ooh. Yeah, hi cat. Very helpful. Uh, star. I'm thinking like a gold star sticker. Gold star slash sticker. Like you're thinking of from um, a sticker chart. Sticker chart, thinking of sticker charts um, surfaces the idea of like a classroom setting and also a reward. If you're doing the mind map, don't worry too much about how it should look and just whatever works for you and whatever tends to make your ideas flow the best. So the, the general idea is you start from a concept and each concept that this makes you think of, those are the first primary branches and then all the things those make you think of are the secondary branches and then the tertiary branches and so on and so forth. But sometimes it's not immediately apparent where something should go in your chart. Just YOLO it a little bit. It's not too much. It's not as much about, you know, making this perfect chart. This is kind of a throwaway thing, you know. It's like it's not something that's gonna be in the final game design documentation. Probably won't even talk about this uh, after this day in which it has become a thing. Star, gold star stickers, I have 
stars on my water, bo water bottle. I'm just gonna write uh, water bottle graphics. This, the mind map can be as specific or broad as you want it to be. It can be very personal too. If this is a tool that you're using, especially in an individual um, scenario, then it's that you can do whatever you want. It's also a great tool for teams. I find it a little more flexible and helps people come up with more creative ideas than a traditional brainstorming session. It's, it comes into use in a lot of different ways. I think some people like to put everything in boxes, be like, okay, first I'll do the mind map, come up with ideas, make the game. But I like to treat the mind map more as a tool. So people have been asking me, what do you, like, do you, did this particular game, did you use a mind map to come up with the idea of this particular game? I recently had this question on Twitter. And it was a hard question because once you start to use mind mapping, it kind of becomes integrated into your game design process. And you might just like break out a sheet of paper and throw down a mind map for anything. If you're getting stuck on mechanics and you want to do more of a mechanical mind map, you can do that. Conceptions, uh, concepts, if you're trying to do, like if you really want to dig into a theme and you want to find what's most exciting, like pottery. If you want to make a game about pottery and you want to find out what's most exciting to you about pottery, then mind mapping can be a great technique. So water bottle graphics. Um, again, this is coming from, for those of you who haven't seen, the unicorn water bottle. That's where we're getting that from. <laughs> Hello, Video Garver. Nice to have you in the chat. Thanks for stopping by. So I got my Unicorn over here. Senor Bob. Hello again. Great to see you. All right. Star, sun, solar system. Do we want to dig more into this idea of space? Space is the final frontier. Or more into the classroom aspect. Or another great thing about mind mapping and when I use it in my teaching sessions for board game design, I like to make people <laughs> grab very disparate sections of it. So for example, um, I used this at the session I did at Mox, uh, maybe about a year ago. And we started with, uh, I forget what the root word was, but we ended up with snails and like cheese and escargot and then racing. Um, so speed, it might have been something about speed that we started out with, but the game Phil and I developed from that one was you were snails like trying to be as slow as possible, so you didn't, it was like a reverse racing game, so you didn't end up in the, um, in the escargot, you didn't end up getting eaten. So in that case, we took these very disparate ideas and tried to cram them together into something cool. Video Garber says, I stream game design too. I've only ever found one other streamer doing it. You make the second. Well, glad to see it. Excellent. I know, depends about board game design. I know a lot more digital developers that do streaming, uh, but I'm excited to have more physical paper prototyping stuff. Not only because I mostly make board games right now, but because I think paper prototyping can be really, really good for digital design as well. In fact, I was thinking before I started the stream, I'd like to make it, I'm going to see if I can push this game, again, it's supposed to be very free form, but I'd like to push it into a form where maybe it's a little more on the digital side of it, or at least a little less traditionally mechanical board game stuff. Space to boldly roll. Are we doing another roll and rate? So I feel like we, we do a lot of roll and rates here, so that might be, this might be where we end up with that space. I'm going to write that down though. Boldly roll Star Trek, right? Because, ooh, okay. So we're talking about how ideas can generate and like smash into each other. And it's kind of like a fusion where you come up with a, a cool new idea because of that. So you had said space to boldly roll. I wrote down Star Trek and now I'm thinking classroom, like a Star Trek 
Academy. Uh, obviously, Star Trek asterisk non-infringing. So uh, I'm gonna actually go to the next page because I think we have some good ideas coming here. <laughs> non-infringing space university game, space uni game. Gonna write that down over here too. Don't forget, cause that's good. That's good. That has hooks. That has legs. Non-infringing space university game. Yeah, digital is everywhere, but tabletop board game development is really rare. I think part of it is getting this set up. Like I w I've been wanting to do this for a while, but getting to the point where I had the double cameras, you really want something visual or to have your tablet where you're drawing or doing stuff like that. Um, and then it's a it's just slightly smaller audience, I think, that's interested in it. I like it because I like watching people code to an extent. And a lot of the digital streams are specifically about coding. So I, I like having more of the ideation, like physical hands-on feel to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Senior Bob, another analog game designer. Stream it and they will come. Yes, we will make it a thing. I also just want it to be entertaining. It's like I'm coming up with game ideas that are probably going to be games. And they're going to be very silly and different games because of the way that we're coming up with them. Mm. But it's also just fun to sit here and think about things. Which reminds me, that brings me back to Game Design Daily, which is part of the title of this stream. It's also a concept and a practice that I do. The idea behind it being do little bits of stuff um, every day, like as often as you can. It doesn't have to be every day. Uh, it's like the idea of daily practice, you know. Do it as much as you can, but don't put big barriers on it to say, I got to make a whole game from scratch. I got to do, I got to read like 10 chapters of my book. If you can make it just be easy, accessible, repeatable, something like this, a big factor of this is just getting my ideas flowing and getting things to move more quickly. And that's just better for anything creative you want to do. <laughs> the, the cats won't stay off the prototyping desk. Yeah, we've... Our cat's, he's in here for a second. Oh, he's flooped on the floor. We've only come back just yesterday, so they've been very stressed out about us being gone. They're sleeping a lot because the stress is coming out of them. If we cuddle punish them when they go up on surfaces, so they've kind of learned not to do that. But yeah, cats and prototyping desks don't always miss. <laughs> Mix. <laughs> Moving into table Tabletopia. I haven't checked out Tabletopia before. I've done a little bit of Tabletop Simulator. So it's another great place to uh, tap into that. All right, so back to this non-infringing space university game. I like the idea of the star charts. Uh, in case you don't know, it wasn't something that you grew up with. Um, a star chart is generally like a you have a person and then you have activities. It's a way of motivating children generally to do the kinds of activities you want them to do. But it's also great for you as, as an adult. A lot of the journaling and different things they have now are based around this concept of giving yourself sticker, actually either actual stickers or just checking out Fox Hell, even a roll and write. I mean, it comes back to this concept of like, I want a reward from like making a physical interaction with the universe. Uh, person, activity, so it could be like J, E, R. Um, so activity is like room cleaning. Oh man, I wish I had my stickers here. I actually have stickers for tra Star Charter stuff. I'm just gonna have to draw it and get out my pink marker so it's like Jane cleaned her room five times this week Jane is a hero and gets all the stars Emma only cleaned her room once she is not doing as well but still gets a star for effort cuddle punish yeah cuddle punishing they don't really like being held so when they're bad we, we like gently hold them and rock them and they hate that it's the worst 
Nice. I'm going to make a note of that. Watch me in my note taking system over here. Because I don't have my Evernote open at the moment. For design development. Yeah, I'm liking the double cameras and the actual physical paper prototyping. It's a very visceral way of doing it. So I'm excited to potentially, where I have the notes over here, uh, potentially doing some digital tabletop here or something to make it a little clearer. Yeah, not quite as tactile and physical prototyping, but I'm making a lot of progress because the cats can't jump and destroy, destroy something until they find the delete button. Yeah, cats and prototyping. It's very, even just like reaching up to the table and kind of like, what is, what are you using up there? Is that important? That's cat stuff, right? It's like little dice and tokens and things. It's like, yes, it is cat stuff. I can see how you would think it was cat stuff. Um, but it's not cat stuff. <laughs> a star chart for a space game, it's pretty meta, right? So we're thinking space game or space university, space school, but what if it's like, uh, like a Star Trek, like, um, Instead of the Star Trek Academy, where you go to, I guess they're college age or high school age. What if it's like the Star Trek Kindergarten? I'm gonna write that down. My marker is double sided now. I love this marker, but I keep forgetting which is which. They really need some sort of UI on these things to say which is which. All right. It's this idea of a Star Trek Kindergarten. Something about uh, interstellar space exploration and then also rewards that you're getting for doing those kinds of things. So now the question becomes, as I sip on my unicorn water bottle, with aliens, space, all sorts of great space stuff. I don't want to dive too much into the mechanics yet. I want to dig a little bit more into this theme and see if there's anything there before we get too focused about it. Like, what kinds of things would space kindergartners do? I remember from watching the Star Trek movies that they have like the Star Trek Academy. They have all sorts of different aliens and stuff in the Academy learning together. I don't remember if they actually showed the classes that they were taking. I think it was a little bit more up to the imagination. I haven't, like I used to watch a lot of Star Trek Next Generation. So in that they were, you know, in the ship, boldly going, going to all the different planets. I know they've touched a little bit on the, the university or like the Starship Troopers Academy. You're doing a lot of, it's very much like a military. So that's an interesting differentiation too, because the Starship Troopers Academy was more like a military academy. In Star Trek, they do get into a fair amount of combat, but it's not supposed to be primarily about combat, right? It's like, we're not only focusing on training people to attack and fight other people. There's a lot of, you know, the, just the boldly, the boldliness. We want to make people bold. We want to make them um, negotiate. Or be friends. I teach people. You see, now a lot of the concepts that come into this uh, Star Trek Academy are very based on some of the things that you would learn in kindergarten. <laughs> Space camp. <laughs> Only the kids have to wear a tiny star for the. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's just one big, like, logo, one big icon. Uh, trying to. I know there's been like different iterations and it's been a while since I watched it. So like coming up with it, it's got like a boomerang shape to it. 
you see, this is what I'm thinking is here is the small child and here is their uniform. Just like that. And then their legs come out. <laughs> that is very kind of large and bizarre, but they're just walking around instead of a whole like an outfit. It's just the, just the logo. Space camp. Space camp. Woo. You have a, wait, do you have this? same unicorn cup because I got this at CVS and I could not buy it. I didn't know why it, I needed it so badly, but now I have it and I drink more water now and it's actually really helpful. Mm. Anti-gravity map. Anti-gravity nap. Giant creatures in space like butterflies and snails. Uh, space ecology. Creatures, okay, I got a lot of stuff happening here. Creatures in space, space ecology, anti-gravity, nap. Now this brings up a cool idea. The, <laughs> it makes me, it reminds me I remember very clearly my parents kept one of my either preschool or kindergarten report cards and it always kind of got to me it's like everything is fine you know um, plays well with others doing like writing letters or like identifying numbers whatever we were doing back in preschool but there was a couple that was balancing on a beam or different things that I wasn't like I didn't get the max in it was like needs improvement or something and I always keep coming back to that as I wasn't good at balancing in preschool I was so like 20 years later 30 years later still so offended by this uh I'll say that too offended by preschool report card and part of it was just this stuff, looking back on it now, it's all so easy. You know, this isn't writing a website. This is like writing the letter A. Just like, I couldn't do that? What was, what was wrong with me as a child? So you're talking about anti-gravity naps, like taking every activity we typically do in preschool or kindergarten and then making it harder. So anti-gravity naps, uh, tying into Titan AE, eating moving food. The food is, make a Titan A-E note there. The food, like their spaghetti, they have spaghetti and little bouncy like meatballs, but they're alive. So trying to eat food, but it's uh, moving for snack time. Uh, playing well with aliens. Aliens, although at this point, like the aliens are just your classmates. You are the alien, really classmates but it could get interesting because even more so and tie it back into this idea of uh like cultural communication you know if someone if, if we're trying to teach kids you know make eye contact smile at people and then you're talking about it happens in human cultures too but different alien cultures to an even bigger extent you know what if they don't have eyes what if they don't have mouths to smile um Cross, this is a cross-cultural, it's probably an alien word for that, cross-cultural communication. Are the players the kids? I think so. That's a good question though. I'll have to come back to that. And this is, we could go with two different directions with this, right? Or at least two different directions. You could be each player can be an individual person, like one child trying to navigate through this Starfleet kindergarten and get the best scores possible. Or you could be a teacher trying to wrangle all of these, um, teacher or student, trying to wrangle all of the individual kids and get them to do their tasks. And maybe each teacher has their own classroom, maybe it's cooperative or like a uh, cooperative competitive where the teacher is trying to, ooh, asymmetrical. It could have an asymmetrical situation here where the teacher is trying to 
maximize all the stars amongst everybody, but the kids are each trying to maximize their own stars. I'm gonna write that down over here. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Asymmetrical teacher trying to maximize all stars. So some kids play, or some players play as the kids, some play as the teachers. And that type of gameplay could be interesting if you could either take or get stars taken away from other players. Or just prevent them from getting stars. <laughs> so the Space Space Fleet Academy kindergarten teacher is sitting there trying to like, okay, just, just eat your food, you know, it's just time to take a nap. And the kids are there sitting there playing cards or doing actions or whatever to poke each other and complaining at each other's like, okay, you can't do it too much, right? So push your luck element. Can't just drop too much or no one gets stars. Like no one gets candy, right? If, if, if any one of you are too naughty, then none of us get anything. Super, it's really funny because I'm working through the rules of play textbook. I'm just on the pr prisoner's dilemma cake cutting section. Uh, and it's very fascinating that this all feeds back in together. No one gets stars. Um, disrupt enough. So just your enemies slash frenemies get stars. I mean, there's some cooperative tasks where you and someone need to work on them together. Yeah, what if the player or the teacher exactly? <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> your coworkers got you a unicorn mug because you're a special unicorn. That's that's high praise. Like I've never someone calls me uh, a special unicorn. I think about that. It could go either way. It can be praise or not praise, but for the most part I try and take it as praise cuz unicorns are great. And unicorn drinking vessels are also great. <laughs> uh, I don't know about being graded on balance. I think we just had activity. It's like uh, when you're you, we're watching kids to make sure they develop. I think it's developmental my, milestones. So there's also just stuff like when the kids when the kids start talking you know, how they're interacting socially. And I think this stuff is important. I don't think we're graded on balance. Like, I don't think it was meant to make me feel bad, even though it did make me feel bad years later when I was able to read my preschool uh, report card. But I think it's more like just re communicating with the parents, right? Like, hey, you know, this person's having some issues with their balance, or they might have um, inner ear thing. I think that's what happened is like I had some balance like inner ear issues because I was decently athletic so I in my own five-year-old memories I see myself as being very dexterous so anyways preschool sidebar wrangling space cats I think that uh, it's very important that this Star Star Academy. What do you think about that? Star Academy, maybe? Don't want to name things too early, but I'm liking Star Academy Kindergarten as a potential name for the game. Pretty evocative. So for our Star Academy Kindergarten, I think it's very important that we have some pets. And they're probably going to be cats, because cats are great. Oh, but it's like a space tentacle cat. Like a cat, cat, cactopus. Let me go to the next page. Let's delve a little bit into this cactopus sidebar. Mm-hmm. Cactopus sidebar. 
do a re-rendering a little larger of this adorable floof floof body uh, probably scales or like shark skin um, maybe still a separate tail but then lots of tentacles uh, like octopus tentacles and I think that the space cats um, let's let's delve a little bit into this is a very important part of the uh, game development procedure is talking about all the pets and adorable creatures that are in your game universe uh, flies through space clings to ships uh, it's a little like that bat creature from Star Wars uh, clings to ships um, not destructive but annoying or was it, yeah not mi minorly destructive minorly destructive uh, and frustrating. So as with real world cats, these cactopus creatures will get in and like mess with the spaceship and if they get inside the spaceship they'll, they'll like play with the cables and might disconnect your warp drive but it's fine. I mean they're cute enough like the cuteness to destructiveness ratio as with house cats um, make sure that the cats stay as part of this universe. A flurkin. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, it's not for me, but for other people. It, yeah, it was just a concept that came up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> flurkin. Oh my gosh, that was one of the best. One of the best parts. All right. So, did our cactus sidebar, one of the creatures in this fun universe... So let's do a quick recap of some of the concepts and things that we're, we've come up with so far for this game design concept. If you're just joining us, welcome. My female cat is named Ripley after alien, after uh, Ellen Ripley and Alien. Oh, it's adorable. Uh, our cats are Inigo and Fezzik, also very relevant to, to nerd pop culture. Fezzik is taking a nap over there. Um, stops poking me because he likes to do that poke me and then when I go to pet him go take a nap because cats so yes back to the recap so far we come up with our four for our game design concept I'm gonna flip back to the mind map so people who weren't here in the beginning will see what we started with because that's super fun so we started with the root concept star from there, went out into planets, space, Star Trek, also went the other direction with gold stickers and a sticker chart. Briefly started to draw out a sticker chart and then came up with this great idea of Star Trek kid Kindergarten, AKA Star Academy Kindergarten. And what we're working with right now is having activities for the kindergartners to do possibly asymmetrical gameplay and you're trying to juggle these activities as a very talented kindergarten the kindergartners in star academy star academy in the star academy <laughs> I imagine are more talented than other kindergartners um yeah so we're gonna have them doing activities the question becomes how do they do these activities we're gonna have some dexterity elements, uh, history or trivia elements, uh, dexterity elements for, like I was thinking about spinning plates, like the planets spin, but you can do a lot of space themed things with like bouncing balls that look like planets, uh, doing like a moon slingshot thing, or so they can be space themed activities? That's a good question, actually. That's something we should delve into. Is this, okay, like this is a very interesting dichotomy point. Is this like really meant to be a preparation for the Star Academy kindergartners 
to go into the Starfleet eventually and become actually really good at this? Or is it more like a themed kindergarten? So sometime in the future, you know, we're not necessarily the cream of the crop, like going into space. It's just more of a, um, like, like, a just a theme slapped onto our kindergarten. So it's like, Hey, do the space kindergarten, do all these space, spacey activities. Uh, I kind of like the idea of it being a more literal academy. So we maybe delve into some of the things that you would do as we had touched on a little bit before. So the making friends, very important cross-cultural communication, very important um, anti-gravity naps. I liked what was mentioned about anti-gravity naps. <laughs> oh man. Oh, so mechanically speaking, I'm not sure exactly how to reproduce this, but in my head, I'm seeing like magnet levitation. So potentially digital implementation, but for a physical implementation, having one of those things where it's a magnet and it's either like a, a plate or a couple, a few different magnets arranged, uh, arranged in an array, and then having to balance the either another magnet or a metal item on top of it. Um, I guess it would be a magnet for the repulsion effect. So getting it to balance without flipping over and being sucked in. Um, that sounds incredibly complex to prototype or build, but we're not worried about it. I think one of the coolest things is going really crazy with your first game design idea prototyping ideas is it can help you unlock some like really cool mechanical ideas that haven't been done before because you're not too beholden to oh it has to be cards it has to be chips it has to be dice it has to be whatever so anti-gravity naps um mini game so right now i'm seeing this as maybe a series of mini games maybe you choose which ones to participate in a uh, mini game of balancing magnets without sticking. Oh, I also really like the idea of this being a playground game or um, big game, large scale game, something where there's a physical element to it. Ooh, yeah, to the next page. Playground slash physical. There's a few terms for it. I guess it's LARP adjacent, but not necessarily with the role playing. So just the LA live action game. I think that might be, I like that live action, live action game. Uh, so a series of mini games, having an actual easel chart here with, with a giant star chart on it and everyone's names, uh, giant easel star chart. So you're going around and doing these activities and maybe there are some of the things like trust activities, like you're trying to hold someone, you actually have a negotiation mini game where you're trying to um, do a mix negotiation. Yeah, I like that. Negotiation mini game, and you're doing a mix of uh, gestures and words. Oh, yes. Okay. This is exciting. So you're doing a mix of gestures and words, but you don't know the language. They don't speak another language. I think tying back into another real world example, when you have very small children who don't speak the same language get together. Uh, this happened to me when I, back when I used to go and visit family in Norway, I was probably four or five years old. They are, the kids want to play. They want to communicate. They use play as part of the communication, but you're also like teaching each other words. 
Uh, so I like this. Teaching words, and maybe you have a little bit of a layout of each of you as an alien character for like, do you have eyes? Do you have a mouth? So maybe three cards that fit together. Uh, like those randomization book where it's like the head goes on the body, goes on the legs. We are getting totally sidetracked now with this uh, communication mini game, but that's cool. Don't worry about it. It's cool. Three card randomizer for alien appearance. Uh, has a little bit of that consentical vibe to it too, where you're offering a thing and you have a lot of unknown space in there. So it's like, I try to, um, like I try to, or, or I ask, you know, I think consent is very important. Ask to shake tentacles, shake, touch appendages and do that interaction. See what's, get the feedback from the interaction. See if it was like, good, bad, or neutral, and then go from there. Transporter do's and don'ts. Fun with fo fo photon torpedoes. I gotta screenshot that because all this stuff is super fabulous. Oh my gosh. Especially transporters. It's hard for me to think too much about the transporters because they really freak me out, especially after seeing the prestige. No spoiler, even though it's been out forever, no spoilers, but watching The Prestige made me really think about the physics of uh, trans about, uh, of the transporters that they have in Star Trek. And just like, it's like, oh, they hand wave in. Like, oh, you just like take your bits apart for a second and then move them somewhere and reassemble them. Or the other idea of take like mapping your bits and reassembling some other bits because it's easier to transmit data than it is to transmit actual particles. But still, if, you, if someone takes apart your bits, you're gonna have a bad day. I'm just saying. Anyways, getting into the weeds with that, but transporter do's and don'ts. Um, that would be cool to dig into the actual, um, a little bit of the history I'm gonna make it over that. Transporter, do's and don'ts. Be interesting to delve into the trivia and history of transporters, because I know there's a lot of cool things. There's a lot of hand waving around them because they can be super powerful and deadly. I don't know how much they really go into it but if you just don't put them back together, the, using the transporter is killing someone. So that would be fun to kind of dig through there and see the kinds of things they've done in the past. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, being 3D printed is not what I'm concerned about. The part I'm concerned about is being 3D destroyed, being not even liquefied, like, particleized. That's the part. Like, I don't ever want to be particleized. Even, like, okay. Think about it this way. If someone looks at me and says like, we're gonna take your parts apart, we'll put you back together, probably be fine. I'm very concerned about that. Even if I see my double like being assembled and I can see them on a screen or whatever, it's like, oh, look, they're there, they're fine. I'm like, I still don't wanna be taken apart. It's scary, it scares me. It gives me nightmares. All right. So, getting close to the end here, um, my voice is holding up pretty well, but I don't want to strain it too much, so I want to get to a good starting point. It's a little tough now, because there's a lot of good ideas here, uh, and that's, again, one of the awesome parts of this exercise, doing it live with you, really enjoying having everyone hang out, getting ideas, and there's so much content here for potentially making many different types of games. But the thesis that I stated in the beginning of potentially doing something a little bit outside of the box, I like this idea of doing a live action game. It's something that I haven't done recently. 
I used to do it all the time as a kid where I just like, hey, we're either going to mod tag or whatever and like designing games from that perspective. But it'd be fun to do a, mi a mini game and then you have the people running up and you're putting like giant stickers onto their chart and coming up with stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to put that right at the top here. I have this Star Academy thing. Okay. Star Academy kindergarten is a very hard word to spell. Star Academy kindergarten. Play as kindergartners um, in the star fleet. Non infringing, very importantly. Star fleet academy kindergarten. Still a hard word to spell. Program. Uh, preparing. That was what we finally decided on here. Program. Preparing to enter um, the Starfleet and learning all the most important tasks. Things like uh, Cactopus wrangling. Transporter do's and don'ts. I love that at this point, like this could also be a role playing game. That would be super fun, or even uh, just like a fiction or a novel. Like we have so much interesting flavor here going on. Uh, cross cultural communication. Oh. I really hope that this is parsable and watchable too because I think one thing as I'm coming up with these ideas and like trying to get everything out really quickly and write everything down it does get a little bit uh frenetic a little like attention like oh there's a butterfly oh there's a star so trying to keep it focused enough that you all can follow along at home uh, live action game role-playing game um or for a bunch of mini games that are simulated in paper. So some of these things that we had talked about do especially that the cross cultural communication mini game, I think there's some really exciting stuff there for potentially even that being a whole game by itself. And thinking a little bit more about this concept, if it does end up being something where that's super cool, right? You take a bunch of games and just make each individual game and it ends up being Star Academy Kindergarten. All these games fit together and you can play them all and have this star chart metagame that goes along with it, but then it's all composed of a series of different games. Maybe some of them are live action, some of them digital perhaps, some of them more traditional like the cards I'd mentioned flipping over for the cross-cultural communication. Could be super cool. I'm actually pretty excited about this game. I'm excited about every uh, game idea that we come up with on the stream. I just need either more people to make all these games, just commission people to make them, or just be faster. <laughs> and that's something I'm working on with potentially doing a prototyping stream. I just had a cool idea for it recently of using my IRL setup. So I've got a tripod and a lavalier mic and a couple of things that could help me get to the point. The issue has been with the space I have on my table here and having enough room to get actual like scissors, get the mat for cutting the cards, whatever I decided to do. But I think with the lavalier mic, I could get into the prototyping of these games we're coming up with, which would be super cool and super exciting. Um, so have the, we'll just say SK. SK game be a meta game that ties a bunch of these mini game activities together. <laughs> Worrying about the fun. I'm going to write the fun with photon torpedoes down. I don't want it to be, I think we can make it funny. I don't want it to be like, oh, these five-year-olds are playing with photon torpedoes. 
uh, I'll see see what I can do with that. Uh, got the cactus in there. Um, cross cultural communication. I think that's everything for now. I'm going to put this together. Put down a few more notes. Actually, idea a couple of ideas. I want to get more of this concept content up on my website because I realize I'm making all this cool stuff. Make it a little easier for people to ask. Uh, access, but also some of the documentation and different things, putting that along there as well so people can watch the videos, watch the streams, and have a breakdown of some of the pictures and some of the ideas that went along with it. That sounds super cool. It's a good idea. Streams are really good for good ideas. Ooh. Meeple Circus. Meeple Circus for the torpedoes or for the transporters. Um, oh, the balancing. That was one of the ones. The magnet balancing for anti gravity naps. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot anti gravity naps. Anti gravity naps. Um, a more kinetic. Meeple Circus. I, I love the concept of me Meeple Circus, especially like I stack my pieces all the time and I would love to just do the stacking of it before an actual game. I'd love to play a little bit around with that idea and um, the different things that you can do with it. A more kinetic Meeple Circus with kinetic challenges. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to hop off now. This has been incredibly fun. I really appreciate everyone joining me every week to do a little bit of ideation. I hope this stuff that I'm doing inspires you and I hope you can incorporate some of these techniques into your own game design. And hopefully come up with some cool, fun, like idea generating techniques to really dig in. My goal is to help people dig in and really find creative, new, unthought of before themes and mechanics and things for games. And I hope that this stream is helping you do it. I'm here every week, Tuesdays at 4 p.m. looking to add some more streams to the schedule. If you have any questions or want to follow up on this or have more ideas afterwards, you can always tweet me at Emma Larkins and look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks everyone for joining in.